I'm the boss lady. The Kelly Holland Show. Watch out, let's go. Just to get inside. Gospel talking, Bible walking, wanna help you see. Faith is calling and she's walking with the victory. The king is on the side and she never quits. Put you on the show and you reminisce. Creative to the point where she's making hits. Business savvy is a Kelly. Are you kidding this? And thank you for watching The Kelly Holland Show. We are so glad you came here today because we are continuing our fishbowl conversations regarding relationships. Ooh. And I have brought on one of my favorite co-hosts, Miss Donna Story. Donna, please let our viewers know who you are and what it is that you do, lovely. I am the Waste Bee Revolutionist. I am yes. the leader in Women's Womb Wellness. You can find me at all social media handles at a natural hair story. Story being spelled S-T-O-R-E-Y. And I'm ready. I'm ready today, Kelly. I'm glad to hear it, honey, because these questions are something else. We are fortunate to have new viewers uh, chime in to our fishbowl conversation. All right. So our first question for today, our first question for today, it comes from, let's see who this is, Allison Meyer out of Bethesda, Maryland. And her relationship question says, what do you think about couples keeping secrets from one another? Miss Donna, I must be honest. I think secrets are necessary um, in the beginning. Um, we, we don't know each other like that. So there's no need for you to know what my stocks and bonds are, my social security mm. numbers, my mm. policies, where I keep money, how I make mm. money, it's my business. Okay. Now, if we got a few mm. years, in, and I mean a few like 10 plus, <laughs> sure. maybe mm. I'm going to build one more secret to you. Once we okay. like. 30 years in, I shouldn't have any more secrets because you're a part of me mm. and I'm a part of you. But in the beginning, oh, most definitely, do not give your heart away for free. Guard it, okay? Ooh. Guard whatever else you need to make sure the relationship works. He might not be able to handle that you've had so many sexual partners. He might not be able to handle that you're actually still friends with maybe a couple of them. Keep those things as <laughs> What about you, Donna? <laughs> okay, what say me? It's like, no, shit. Um, so this this is kind of how I feel. I feel like uh, as a person, you change who you are very often. That is a part of evolution and growth. Um, you basing who I am now off of who I was in the past, you're only doing yourself a disservice. I've grown so much. I'm not the girl I was when I was 20. I'm not the girl I was when I was 30 and even 35. So um, I don't know about secrets that you create while you're the current relationship but i okay. do feel like anything that is connected to past life yeah it's your business you don't got to tell nobody about your past life because people will judge you based off of those things so kelly i mean i think you're saying out of eye on this thing right but you know what i didn't mention that caveat that you, mentioned, you know um in the beginning right but sure. but 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 while we're in this new relationship am i making new secrets that's, oh. I don't think that's going to work either. I think there should be no. open and honesty conversations from at that point. However, sure. my past life is definitely my past life. And I don't want you to dig it back up in an argument and throw it in my face. You know what I mean? Some things is not worth talking about. Do you like me? Do you love me? Have you enjoyed my time? Can we grow from here is what I would like to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, absolutely. And just to piggyback off of it, I'm not searching well i am searching up your criminal record i feel like everybody should but i'm not holding against you i'm not holding the charges you got when you was 15 against you so let's move forward <laughs> you see what type of man we frequent sometimes from time to time <laughs> no rough, no rough. <laughs> so. well you know the, the pool is kind of short for us kelly as black women so we gotta do what we gotta do oh my sorry i shouldn't have talked about it but i did 
art. I, I think I'm about to join a country club and see what life is over there because I'm not. It's not working in my current settings. Okay, it's just not. Um, but Stephanie Garcia out of Columbia, Maryland, wants to know: Are you happy with the intimacy you share? Of course, honey. I'm always happy with intimacy. It's just that I don't have none right now, boo boo. So, <laughs> so that's my dilemma. But I'm always happy with intimacy because with that, um, I feel that the sex is much better because we have a mental connection. I also feel that you're dependable and you can protect me throughout our intimacy. So I don't just think of intimacy as sex. I think of it as our close relationship that we've built between one another, our secret love language that we often pay attention to. Um, and so I'll leave it right there with intimacy. Um, what about you, Ms. Donna? Um, I am I am very new to the world of intimacy, so I'm glad that that question popped up. Um, I think that it is a very crucial part of every relationship. I feel like intimacy for every relationship looks different. You know, could be you guys cooking together, it could be cuddle time, could be cupcake night. When my man say, "Hey, when it's cupcake night, don't ask me to come out." Me and my girl making cupcakes. Nobody knows what it looks like, but I think it's important because that helps you get to know one each other. I mean, each other, like, for your soul. I think that's very, very important. So, yeah, let's rock. Great question. Great question. Let's see what's next. Sometimes they get a little kinky, which I don't mind, but please. I'm please. Nice. You know, sometimes they like, what you like to do, how you like to do it, when you like to do it. I mean, you <laughs> out here telling everybody you single, they going to get to the, they going to get to the root. That's it. Come what may, honey. Come what may. So... <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Brittany oh, Evans out of Baltimore. Hey, Brittany. I don't think I don't think we trust each other. Should I trust my boyfriend completely? No. No. He's your boyfriend. No. No. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you will be one of the most naive green persons in the world. He will absolutely love to take advantage of you not knowing any street smarts. Um, and um, he might have a whole rotation on the side and you think you're the only one. So oh, it happens. <laughs> it's definitely happened. I've been a part of the rotation. So <laughs> I've had well, my talking. Okay, so these situationships that occur, no, um, do not completely trust your boyfriend. Um, fresh out the, fresh out the bed, fresh out the relationship. Don't, don't, don't trust him completely. You have to learn to trust one another. You have to learn through your experiences mm. to build trust within one another. You can be skeptical about many things, and chances are you right on the head with it, baby. Mm. Nah, he's not doing that. He's probably doing exactly that. So. <laughs> I will Ooh. never, ever, ever trust the man completely until he has earned my trust. Mm. Mm -hmm. So here I go. Here I go uh, with my that my spiel. Um, I feel like trust is earned, but I also feel like when you do come into a relationship, you should be open to trust them what somebody says. So I'm going to believe what you say until you prove me otherwise. Just because for me, it allows me to function a little bit more. It allows me to focus on my goals and aspirations instead of what the heck you got going on. So um, I don't, I'm not saying be green. I'm saying don't assume the worst until the worst occurs. So that's just my spiel. Right, but don't be naive when the worst comes and lets you know that it's in the building and you still want to be like, not my man. <laughs> right, and let's just, let's just call the spade a spade. Some some people like see the symbols and still want to stay. Yeah, so, I mean, <sighs> that's, that's that's girl. Just do what you want to do because that's what you're gonna do anyway. Next question. <laughs> Should I trust him? <laughs> <laughs> Ends, honey. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> so we have Joseph Everett out of Catonsville, Maryland. Life is short. Do you believe in staying with the partner for a very long time or even forever? That's up to you, Joseph. <laughs> Sound like you're ready to jump ship now. <laughs> oh, he's looking for the exit already. If that's what you break up. If that's what you plan on doing, just do it, honey. But at the end of the day, should you trust your partner? Should you be with your partner forever? And should you love your partner forever? Um, I think it's worth a chance. Um, I think when you get into relationships, you should be 
considering making this work for the long haul. Um, that's why we have dating, where you can just date and figure out who you are and set your boundaries. Um, but some people, they like to call themselves in a relationship and they just been on a few dates. That's a big no-no for me. I'm not cutting mm -hmm. off anybody I entertain until you told me that you want to be exclusive and you've shown me that exclusive effort. If I don't mm -hmm. see that from you, I'm going to date whoever I want. And it's none of your business until you are mm -hmm. the I absolutely feel that people should live that way. Um, and if you think that you're ready for a long-term relationship, embrace it. If you think that maybe you want to try it out, but you're really not sure because you don't like being monogamous, this probably isn't a thing for you. Maybe you need to spend more time on your own and dating. Ooh. Absolutely. Ooh. Don't be messy. Out. <laughs> what you think, Donna? If you ask in a question, then you know there's some doubt. Anything you question, you usually have a little bit of doubt behind it. So I'm going to say just be honest with the women you meet and let them know that just like you told us, and don't you switch it around just because they're pretty. You say, <laughs> life is short. I don't know if I want to be with most partners. Let's see how that work out for you, buddy. <laughs> and, and that's just that on that. <laughs> that's just that on that. That was my laugh out loud moment. <laughs> yeah, you on, when you on the dating site, you're not on that talking about some. They like, what do you like? Long walks in the park. He like, no, life is short. I don't know if I'm gonna be stuck with the right partner. Come on, buddy, cut it out. Stop it. <laughs> but thank you for thank you for writing in. We appreciate right. you. <laughs> 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 Rachel Matthews out of Bowie, Maryland says, is it ever okay to lie? If it is, when and what kind of situations? Um, Kelly, <laughs> this is, this is, oof. All right, here's a good lie, Rachel. Do I look fat in this dress? Maybe. is not the answer you should give somebody. Girl, you look good. If she wanted to put that dress on and come out in front of y'all, mm. she had the confidence to carry out the night. If not, is she going back home to change and hold y'all up? We're not doing that. So yes, you look good. Um, yes, you are beautiful. And that shouldn't be a lie. Yes, I, <laughs> that should not be a lie. Um, uh, but, but in certain situations, I think when it's an opportunity to encourage someone, encourage them. Um, mm -hmm. When it's an opportunity to be honest and truthful, then do that. Um, please don't take an encouraging moment and break somebody down. I think there are good little white lies when you're trying to help someone feel confident about themselves. Um, don't lie to me about a girl you got across town pregnant. <laughs> Them lies don't count, fool. <laughs> so, <laughs> but in a matter of making me feel better, even if you know I'm not living that type of lifestyle right now, 10 minutes later, I might be that person you said I was. So everyone's <laughs> evolving. Okay. We're ever revolving. I'm not the person mm -hmm. I was at eight o'clock this morning. Okay. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think little encouragement lies are okay. I don't think you should lie about reality. I don't think you should lie about things that would mm -hmm. be a red flag in our relationship. But yeah. Ms. Donna, is it ever okay to lie? And <laughs> This is so hard. This question is so difficult because, like, if, if, if you like, hey, does my mom' new teeth look good? Like, and they don't. I mean, I don't know. I guess I would have to say yes, and that probably would be a lie. But um, if you're lying about, like you said, people, places, things, current events, I'm gonna say no. But here's it. Let, let me tell you what I've learned. I've learned that there are blanket statements, just like you said. Um, that actually smooth things over and it's kind of like right in between the lie, but I just don't want to tell you everything. So just like, sure. Yeah, sure. You didn't say yes, you didn't say no. You see what I'm saying? Like, you're right. Right, in the middle. you're right in the middle. So, nah, don't be lying about people, places, and things. But, yeah, some things you probably should keep to yourself. Exactly. And I definitely agree. Um, especially since we're in this holiday season. Baby, was my macaroni and cheese good? It was the best. Knowing that thing was dry as I don't know what. It was the best. <laughs> so, it ain't no cheese in the macaroni and cheese. Who made this? The turkey dry. It was the best turkey I ever had. We're going to encourage you to keep cooking. Okay? Um, and we might even host a dinner next year to take some things off your plate. And so... <laughs> 
<laughs> positive reinforcement. There we go. I will encourage you. Amen to that. Amen to that. Let's see. We have another question over here in the fishbowl. Um, who wrote into us? Let's see. We have here Elizabeth Kelly. She comes from Bainbridge, Georgia. Okay. Bainbridge, Georgia. Georgia? Girl, I have no idea, but <laughs> apparently it's a place. So I'm going. I'm going. See you in a little bit. <laughs> we gonna catch you. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. Um, have you ever been in love before? Ooh, you went deep, boo. <laughs> have I ever been in love before? Yes. Yes, I've definitely been in love before. All my little kitty relationships that I thought was love did not compare to the love I grew to have um, while I was married. It was a new type of love, a secure type of love. It's a you and us against the world type of love. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a building our family, building our future type of love. It's, mm -hmm. it's all of that. Um, but like I said, I'm divorced because my love was not reciprocated. Um, my children's father wanted to be involved with the whole city of Baltimore in the most nasty, despicable ways. And so because of that, my love was betrayed. Um, and that's just me being completely transparent with you. Um, my love, mm -hmm. was um, it took me months, years, maybe to kind of get mm -hmm. myself back together because I loved for a very long time, um, approximately 17 years. So you don't just, mm. think, <laughs> okay, mm. after all that time, um, and think that I'm just going to bounce back immediately. So I've been, sure. in the, and I've also had my heart broken. <laughs> I you? have, I, I've, I've, um, I've been in love. Like I've been in love and I, I love love. So um, I kind of look at things a little bit different. Um, the best uh, relationship I've ever had is with myself. Um, I started loving on me and it went better than anything I could have imagined. So I would say that if you have a void and you are thinking that a relationship can fill it, it cannot. Um, oh. You got to love you. You oh. got to love you. Um, you got to start to be alone with you. You got to be okay with being alone, doing things you like without saying, hey, does anybody want to go with me? No, they don't want to go with you because nobody don't like what you like because you're the only person that knows what you like. So, um, yeah, I'm going to say I've been in love a lot and I'm thankful because all of those things helped me grow. But the best love I've ever had was for Donna. You know what? That's a perfect answer to give Donna because during my transition, I learned how to love Kelly. Um, mm. I learned how to date Kelly. I've learned how to just be a stronger person on my own. I'm not yeah. saying that I never want to fall in love again or I'm not open to a long term relationship again, but I'm also saying that I did have to take the time out to date myself. And I did. Yes things on my own everybody don't like what i like to eat because i like to be real eclectic with my palate and um everybody doesn't like to go where i want to go or they're not available when i'm available and that's okay because now i have to compromise mm -hmm. and share my time with you when i really want to be by myself reflect and enjoy a good time so sure. dating myself was something i had to get used to let me tell you girl mm -hmm. Days, I would leave work and I work down by the water downtown and um, it's just a nice little area to walk through lots of restaurant stores and what have you mm -hmm. um, and I just know that every single couple came out that night and wanted to be showing off in my face is the way I took it I didn't <laughs> no groups of threes no single people no no groups of anything bigger than two all I saw was two people looking like they was in a whole relationship walking by me and I was mad so <laughs> What are y'all out here doing, being in love and everything? What are you guys out here doing, being in love and holding it? <laughs> to get y'all. So <laughs> I didn't take it so good in the beginning, but you know what? I got used to it and I'm okay. I feel really good, very confident. And you're right, Donna. First love of myself is what got me to that point. And it also helped me to create standards and boundaries. Hello. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hello. All right. Very important. Our next question is from David Winters. He's uh, he re wrote into us from Hagerstown, Maryland, and he says, is it bad that I don't feel the same way I felt for my partner at the beginning of the relationship? No, David, it's not bad. Sometimes we grow beyond our partner. Um, and that's me taking a high road with this question, because I don't know if you just. I want this question so bad. Being a dog. 
or whatever. I don't know. Um, but if everything's on the up and up and you just don't feel the way you did in the beginning, I believe that's a conversation that needs to be had between yourself and your partner. They may not be feeling you no more either. Y'all might just mm -hmm. be tolerating each other for this time period because you've been together for so long. Those things should not keep you in a relationship that you know is over with. So if you feel like mm -hmm. the over with have the conversation get your space um and, and don't run back to the person because you're feeling lonely learn how to love yourself mm. Mm. quickly i just want to jump in and say that uh, a relationship is going to be work dave um people grow and people change um you before you say you are not interested anymore i want you to evaluate your level of involvement Mm. Are you involved how you used to be? Are you doing the things that connected you guys in the beginning? Because a lot of times people start to lax with the partners and then they say, oh, I'm not as interested. But are you doing the things that connected you all? And with that being said, reflect. Absolutely reflect. And one last thing I want to add on. When somebody say, you should know how to do this because you should know who I am. x -lay. we don't go for that either. I don't know. OK, I don't know. Every second of the day, I don't know. And it takes you to reaffirm that. OK, <laughs> but we're going to wrap this up right here because I'm starting to get a little upset. So, <laughs> thinking about the food. Say to me. Um, <laughs> relationship, <laughs> yes or upper you. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, hurry up and get out of there if you're done. Thank okay, you. If you're done, just go. Don't nobody want you winging around and you don't like me no more. Get out. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Shout out to all of our sponsors. Um, big shout out to um, Kanisha for the hair, honey. She does the best sew-ins. Um, Lexi nailed it for the, the nice little Christmas flavor. Um, Charlie's Closet. She supplies me with clothes. And Life Academy because they offer financial literacy, work development skills, and, and life skills as well. Um, Donna, any shout outs for you? I, I, I want to add on so shout out to the Life Academy. Life Academy actually helped me. So they are amazing. Get to know them if you don't. Also, get your kids to know about Life Academy. Yes. Um, I want to give a yeah, financial literacy needs to be spread in our community. Yes. Um, I want to give a shout out to a natural hair story for this amazing, amazing lock up dude. Um, I also want to give a shout out to the purple flip. CMOS is important, it will change your life and your health. And last but not least, I want to give a shout out to Women's Womb Wellness Healing One woman and one way speed at a time yes. um thank you i appreciate you having me kelly well please come back miss donna we love you as a co-host and remember to always write in we would love to have your questions read on our show never forget to tap back into your unspeakable joy and we'll see you next time